Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Welcome to another part of Aptitude for CSRNet series. Today in this video we are going to talk about time and distance questions. Basically we have discussed about speed and time graph related questions in our previous video of this particular series itself and I hope that you have already watched that. In case if you are missing this, out, this series out, I will give you link for the series in the i button over here. You can watch the entire playlist. There are various different topics which I have discussed about uh, Aptitude for CSRNet, right? So today we will talk about time and distance. Basically what I am going to talk, talk about to be precise is numericals based upon time and distance, average speed, average distance, average time based upon all these things we will try to understand how we can solve it easily without having much of difficulty. Okay. So basic 2-3 formula are there which you need to know in order to solve such questions. All right. If you are liking this series, please do subscribe to the channel, give this video a like so that it reaches out to more people who are uh, preparing for CSRNet and uh, now without wasting any time let's continue with our video Alright, so this time and distance, this whole concept is basically based, up, it's all related, okay. Three things like speed, distance and time are related to each other, alright. So if you increase the speed, okay, if you increase the speed and keep the distance constant, time is going to decrease, right. So speed and time has an inverse relation and then speed and distance have a direct relation. So there is a basic formula which all of us should know is that speed is equals to distance upon time. What this formula basically tells us that if you increase a speed of something, some a moving object, the time to reach a particular distance will automatically decrease, okay? And vice versa. If the speed is decreased, time will increase, right? So this is the formula which relates speed, distance and time with each other. Now, based upon this, different types of questions are asked in CSRNet. Uh, there are questions based upon uh, train, then question based upon um, like boat uh, and uh, river. So all those questions I will try to cover in upcoming videos. But here I will be talking about basic questions which are asked based upon this formula. Okay. Now apart from this, this is one formula which you have to remember. From here itself you can make different formulas like if I have to write down the formula for time, what I have done, I have taken time to this side, I will switch speed to this side. So time will be equal to distance upon speed. Now you don't have to remember this formula. If you remember this, this you can use, like easily get. And the third which you can make is that distance is equals to speed into time. Right. So basically these two things are getting multiplied. So just one formula you have to remember, others you can make of your own. Now the next thing which you have to understand or the next formula which you need to know is for the average speed. Okay. So average speed. So sometimes what happens it is given that a particular of uh, some moving object let's say car, bike, train, anything they can give it moves from some point A to some point B with some speed let's say it is moves with uh, 50 km per hour and it comes back with a certain speed let's say 40 km per hour and they ask you to find out average speed of it. Now people start doing it in this way they try to find out the average of the speed from here like uh, some of the terms divided by the number of terms that's the formula of average but that is not you have to do everywhere okay it can be used over here in this scenario but if they change a little bit in this scenario let's say if they give a halt or if it goes to a certain more place like if it goes from A to B then B to C and then they are asking the average speed in that case things will be different so how to find out average speed the basic formula for average speed is like average speed is total distance traveled Okay, total distance covered or traveled divided by total time taken. Okay, so you, what you have to do is you have to find out what is the total distance based upon speed and time values which are given to you. Find out total distance, then find out total time, divide both of them to get the average speed. So, this is again one of the important formula which you should know in order to solve such questions. All right, so these are only two or three things which you need to know in order to solve questions based upon time and distance. 
Now let me take a question from previous year of CSI net exam and let's see how to solve it. All right, so let's take a question uh, which was asked in CSIR 2020 exam. The question says that an employee walking from her home reports to her office 30 minutes early if she walks at the speed of 6 km per hour and reports 30 minutes late if she walks at the speed of 4 km per hour. So how far in kilometer is her office from home? So again, the thing is we have to make the condition. Okay, so let's say this is home and let's say this is office. Okay, so the distance between these two things is fixed. We don't know that. So let's say that the distance is what we have to calculate and let it be D. Okay, I'm calling it as a small D. All right, now let's say that the time which she will take when she will Okay, so we have two speeds, okay, basically. The first speed is 6 km per hour, okay. When she is moving with 6 km per hour, so what is happening with the time that she is reaching how much? 30 minutes early. So she is reaching 30 minutes early. Means, early means she is taking 30 minutes less to reach over there, right? 30 minutes early means uh, there is a like she has reached if she has to reach 10 by 10 a.m. She already reached by 9 30 a.m. If she has to reach by 12 uh, p.m. She has already reached by 11 30 a.m. That means she has reached over there 30 minutes early means there is a uh, like she has uh, a buffer of 30 minutes means she has taken 30 minutes less to reach over there. Okay, so we can say the same thing in another language that she is taking 30 minutes less to reach there. Okay. 30 minutes to less to reach there. Now, the other scenario is that when she is moving with 4 km per hour, in that case, she is getting 30 minutes late. That means if she has to reach by 10 am, she is reaching by 10.30 am. If she has to reach by 12 noon, she is reaching by 12.30 pm. So, 30 minutes she is reaching late or we can say that she is taking 30 minutes uh, more to reach. Right? These are the two things which we can understand. Now, the second thing is that the units needs to be in same. Okay, so if you are calculating a speed in kilometer per hour, your time should also be in hours. So 30 minutes means I can write down it as half hour or uh, 30 upon 60. That means 0 0.5 hours, right? So 0 0.5 hour uh, are more to reach. Okay. In the same way, this will become this value will become basically 0 0.5 hour less to reach. Now I'll make this scenario as a table over here. So when my speed, when my speed is this, okay, uh, then I have a time. Okay, so speed is six kilometer per hour, and the other speed is four kilometer per hour. Okay, now we'll try to find out the time according to this formula, like according to this formula. So if you know the speed, you want to find out time, so it will be distance upon time will be distance upon speed, right? So distance is distance is fixed now. In both the cases, distance is D and D. Distance is not changing, it's D only. Home and office are not changing their positions, they are at the same places. So the time required for this will be how much according to the formula? Time will be distance upon speed, right? Distance upon speed. So for the first case, the time will be d upon 6, and for the second case, time will be d upon 4, right? So we have got the time which is which they are going to take to reach at different speeds, right? Now you have to understand that where you are taking more time. You already know that when uh, the speed was less, this time is more, right? So let's call them as t2. And let's call it as t1. So what we know that t2 is more than t1, right? Or I will just write it down like this. t2 is more than t1. And if you see the gap between these two, okay, according to the question, if you just look upon the gap between these two, so when uh, she is moving with a speed 4 km per hour, so the time required is 30 minutes early, uh, sorry, 30 minutes late. And when uh, she is moving with a speed 6 km per hour, she is getting 30 minutes early. So, let's for this for understanding it, let's assume that she has to reach by 10 am. 
so when she is moving by uh, 6 km per hour she is reaching there by 9.30 am itself ok 9.30 am ok and when she is moving with 4 km per hour at that time she is getting 30 minutes late that means she is uh, reaching there by 10.30 am so what is the difference between the time when she is moving with these two different speeds so the difference between time is of course 1 hour right so there is a difference of 1 hour that means we can say that t2 minus t1 the difference between the times is 1 hour ok now considering all this we just have to put the values here so t2 is d upon 4 and minus t1 is d upon 6 this is equals to 1 you have to solve this taking LCM I just have space over here I will do it here so 4 and 6 has LCM of 12 this will become 3d minus 6 divided by 12 is 2 so 2d is equals to 1 if you subtract you will just get a d upon 12 is equals to 1 or you will say that d is equals to 12 kilometers so the distance between home and office is 12 kilometers so this is how it needs to be done the logic to solve this question was to first of all find out the time okay in the terms of distance so what we have done here we have first found the time in terms of distance then we have seen what is the time what is the difference of the time and then we substituted the value of time in terms of difference to find out also in terms of distance to find the distance okay so using same formula we have done this all right let's take another question to solve this okay this was again asked in CSIR uh, September 2022 exam it was again based upon the same uh, speed and uh, time and distance quotient. Well, what it says that two routes x and y between the same places are respectively 30 kilometers and 20 kilometers long. A person traveling from a uniform speed of 30 km per hour goes along route x and realizes midway that it has been closed. He takes a connecting route which brings him to the midpoint of the route y and continues on y he reaches the destination in one hour so how much time did he spend on the connecting route okay so let's first of all make the whole scenario so there are two routes x and y between the uh, between the same places so let's say there is a place one let's call it as place a and there is a place b the, there are two routes to reach from place a to place b this is route number x this is route x and there is one more route which is route y okay it says that route x is 30 kilometer long okay this is 30 kilometer long whereas route y is 20 kilometer long all right now it says that a person traveling at a uniform speed so there is a person there is a person whose speed is 30 kilometer per hour okay his speed is this and uniform means the speed is not changing so 30 km per hour goes along route x and realizes midway means he is going on this route okay i'll change the color right so he is going on this route till half of it till midway okay till midway he is going that means how much distance he might have covered if the total distance is 30 to reach to this midway he has covered 15 kilometers 15 kilometers he has covered already with the speed he realizes midway that the uh, route has been closed that means this x route is closed okay he takes a connecting route now he goes in on a connecting route means there is a route which is connecting route let's call it as c take a route number c which is connecting route and um, connecting route which brings him to the midpoint of route y now he reaches the midpoint of route y okay and continued on y to reach the destination so he reached the destination by continuing to y so if this is the midway or the midpoint of this y and total y was 20 km how much distance he would have covered on y so of course 10 kilometers right 10 kilometers he has covered here so it says how much time did he spend on the connecting route and he say it says that he reaches the destination in one hour okay so one hour he took to reach the whole destination so to solve this question there like you can do it very easily okay See the speed is fixed over here 30 km per hour. He has traveled from here to here 15 km and here to here 10 km. There was a connecting route. They are asking how much time did he spend on the connecting route? How much time it took? 
distance and all you don't have to calculate so that's a good thing what you have to do now is find out what time he took here to go from this to this midpoint okay now you know that the speed is 30 km per hour and the distance take okay, a distance in the first case is 15 km so time you can calculate time will be distance upon speed distance upon speed and that will be uh, distance is 15 km speed is 30 so if you solve that will give you half hour because the speed and distance both are in kilometers like distance is in kilometer speed is in kilometer per hour so the time will come in hours or you can say 30 minutes right so from here to here he took he took 30 minutes right again you will uh, you can you also have to find out what time he took on reaching from this midpoint of y to the destination right so this time also we will calculate same thing we will do in this case the distance is 10 kilometers the speed is same that is 30 kilometers so the uh, time will be 10 upon 30 which will give you 1 by 3 hours 1 by 3 hour means if you want to convert it in minutes 1 by 3 into 60 you have to do and that is going to give you 20 minutes so that means he has taken 20 minutes to reach from here to here total time they have given to you total time total time is one hour right according to question he take one hour total right it took one hour to reach the destination one hour means 60 minutes so if total is 60 minutes here he took 30 minutes here he took 20 minutes so how much time he would have spent here simple logic like total is 60 30 plus 20 is 50 so he would have taken how much 10 minutes here then only total 60 minutes will come right and that's a correct option is option number c which is 10 minutes simple it is very simple it was asked recently in csrnet so i hope you understood how to do this type of question right okay let's take one more question this was asked in a csir uh, june 2021 okay which happened in the month of february okay it says the distance between x and y is 1000 kilometers a person flies from x at 8 am local time and reaches y at 10 am local time he flies back after a halt of 4 hours at y and reaches x at 4 pm local time on the same speed what is at the same day what is his average speed for the duration uh, of uh, he is in the air fine see it's very simple to do there are two positions x and y okay these are the dis no, destinations now basically the distance between these two places is 1000 kilometers all right now the person starts here at 8 am he started his flight from here and he reached y at 10 am right so how much time he would have taken time is two hours right two hours he took when he is going from here to here all right now he take a halt of four hours so after 10 am if I count it separately, so halt is 4 hours. So, uh, like he reached at 10 am, right? At 10 am, he reached 4 hour halt. So, at what time he has to fly back? Okay, so fly back time will be you have to add 4 according to the uh, time, you have to uh, like uh, add 4 to this. So, after 10, if you add 4, so it will be 11, 12, 1, and 2. So basically, he has uh, started at 2 p.m. Why 2 p.m.? Because from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. he was in a halt. Okay, he was in that halt. He was sitting. He was not flying. So from 2 p.m. he started his flight and he reaches at 4 p.m. Uh, back. Okay, so 4 p.m. he reaches at X. So how much time he again took? time is again 2 hours right what they are asking is what is the average speed of for the duration he is in the air so what is his average speed that's what they are trying to ask so how we will do that simple it is uh, average speed is average speed is total distance upon total time now how, what is the total distance when you went from x to y he traveled 1000 km when he came back from y to x he again traveled 1000 km so total distance will be 1000 plus 1000 
what will be the total time so while going from here to here he took uh, two hours right and while coming back from here to here again he took two hours so two plus two that means four hours so it will be 2000 divided by four that will make it 500 kilometer per hour so that is going to be his average speed which will be given by option number a so this is how this question needs to be done it was a simple question all right so now is the time for homework question of this video so the homework question for today is given over here okay it says that a man completes a journey in 10 hours he travels first half of the journey at the rate of 21 km per hour and the second half of the journey at 12 km per hour find the total journey in kilometers okay so that's what you have to find out so try to do this particular question total time is given to you uh, speeds are given to you different speeds you have to find out total distance okay you have to apply the logic which we have discussed in the video formula will be these formulas are only going to be used think about it try to answer it and let do let me know in the comment section what answer you are getting okay so now is the time when i'll explain you the solution of the uh, homework question asked in the previous video okay that was Venn diagram so let me take you to that question all right so this was the homework question which we discussed in the Venn diagram video it says that in a college 200 students are randomly selected 140 like tea, 120 like coffee, 80 likes both tea and coffee. They have asked how many students like only tea, how many students like only coffee, how many students like neither tea nor coffee. So this is a typical Venn diagram question and of two scenarios or two quantities. So let me draw a Venn diagram first of all. So we have um, two things, right? So let me make them like this. Okay. So what they have given ki in a college of 200 students so the total students total students are 200 fine 140 like t okay so how many people like t 140 and how many of them like coffee so they are 120 so let's call this as tea let's call this as coffee and this region is the one who are liking both so both of them are 80 okay so there are 80 people who are liking this both of them now to solve this further to understand or to explain this what we have to do is we have to uh, talk about how many students like only t only t means i am going to talk about this number okay like only t comes i am talking about only this value now this t when you are talking about this t number the number of students who like t here you are having both of them who like only t also and it also includes those who like both so in order to find out number of students who like only t what you have to do is you have to subtract the number of students who like t um, like you have to subtract those who like both okay so number of students who like both you have to just subtract from here so number of students who like t is 140 both are 80 if you subtract that uh, you are going to get 60 so there are 60 students who like only tea okay similarly you can find out how many students like only coffee okay so only coffee then if you are doing same thing you have to do for only coffee you have to subtract from the total coffee uh, students who like coffee you have to subtract those who like both tea and coffee so only coffee uh, sorry coffee is 120 if you subtract 80 there are 40 so there are 40 people who like only coffee so you have done these two points now the third one which says how many students like neither tea nor coffee so basically we are talking about this outside region how to find out that so to find that out what you have to do you have to so neither neither tea nor coffee for that what you have to do from the total students this whole rectangle is total from the total students you have to subtract what you have to subtract those who like tea you have to also subtract those who like coffee now in this process you have actually subtracted this region two times right once you have subtracted it along with tea once you have subtracted it along coffee so that you have subtracted it two times 
so you have to add it once so both if you put the values so total students were 200 number of students who like t not only t i'm not talking about those who like only t okay i'm talking about those who like t so that is 140 minus those who like coffee is 120 and plus both are 80 if you solve this whole uh, this is going to become 260 and 280 minus 260 is going to be 20 so there are 20 people who neither like tea nor like coffee this is one way of solving there is one more way how you can do that the another way is in that case what you have to do i'm just doing it here because i don't have much space okay so i'll do it here okay so another way second way of doing the same thing neither tea nor coffee so for that what you have to do you have to uh, from total just subtract only tea subtract only coffee okay so only tea means you are subtracting only this region this much region only coffee means you are subtracting only this much region but this central region is also left out now you have to subtract that, that also means you have to subtract uh, both once you have done this you just put the value so total is 200 minus only t is how much 60 only coffee is how much 40 and both are how much 80 so if you do this this will again be 60 and 40 100 and 80 is 180 if you subtract 180 from 200 it is 20 so from both the cases you will get the same answer all right i hope you understood how to solve this question so that's it from my side guys thank you so much for watching i hope uh, the speed distance and time related questions are clear to you you are able to do questions related to them and these are my different social media platforms uh, the handles for different social media platform if you want to join me over there you can join them using these link the links are also there in the description of this video thank you so much for watching see you guys in the next one till then have a great day bye bye take care hey guys so on academy has launched a revise india series it is a free video series for csir ugc net june 2023 exam in this series you will be able to attend free sessions by the india's top educators for csir ugc net these sessions will be very helpful for your csir net preparation and uh, for your june 2023 exam so all you have to do is follow the link given in the description of this video you will come up to this particular page there are various educators whose classes you will be able to see all these classes are free of course so you can watch these classes you will be able to see the classes of all the subjects over here so depending upon which subject you belong to you can choose a particular class a particular educator a particular topic and watch that particular class